Okay, the first video in the algorithm series, which is basically giving a start to this entire movement. And for the first thing, I thought it would be kind of uh, wise to go over binary search. Basically, binary search. The, first of all, the problem statement. The problem statement is that the following. If we have, let's say, a1, a2, a3, and a n, and we know one thing that a1 is less or equal to a2 is less or equal than a3 and so on and so forth which means they are sorted in other words the question is we want to give an answer to the following question let's say an f find an x will be let's say 1 if there exists some kind of an i uh, that for the a i equals to x, which is which means basically the x element exists in the series and at the same time zero, if not. Well, this is some kind of a fancy mumbo jumbo, basically saying that can do we have that element or not, and how can we efficiently answer that question. And we can efficiently answer that question, provided that they're sorted, of course, because if they were not sorted, there would be no other way but to take each element compared to x and say whether it is the same element or not. Okay, so this is where the binary storage comes in, in a sense that let's say that we are trying, we are going to start doing our comparison by taking the element and comparing it to our x, which actually relies right in the middle. Which means we are taking the am and compare with x. And m is exactly n and a half. So we are taking the middle element and we are seeing whether th this is our x or not. Okay, so since we are comparing it, there are two outcomes and there are actually three possible outcomes from this. Well, first of all, am is x. This means that uh, if we found it, then yeah, the answer is yes, we have an x element and it's on the m position. This is basically the end. Okay, so the second case is that am is less than x. And the third case, of course, is that am is more than x. Okay. So if the middle element is less than x, right, then this basically means that we can discard all the elements from 1 to m, because if a m is less than x, then a m minus 1 would be less than x, and a m minus 2 would be less than x, because both of these are less than a m itself, because they are sorted. That's why we can just discard all of this and do the same search for the middle element between m and n. Take the middle element and do the, basically the very same operation. And uh, correspondingly, if it is greater than x, then it means that a m plus 1 would also be greater than x, a m plus 2 and so on will also be greater than x, which means in that case there is no point in looking from the elements m plus 1 to n, so we basically need to again do the same thing by taking the middle element, uh, element of elements from 0 to m. The same thing. Okay, so which basically means that if each time we're dividing it to the half, we are going to have the uh, logarithmic complexity for the search of the binary search and I'm very bad at using this uh, writing tool but I will get better eventually okay so this was the artistic part of it now we can dive deep into the code and see how does the code look like okay the code it's in the searches well, this file is going to grow, but you can keep in mind one thing, that whenever you see some kind of function or algorithm being in some specific file, it is going to be there. It might change the position, maybe get, get more above, maybe get more below, depending on the size of the code, but it's going to be in that file. So that's what you should keep in mind. Okay, so basic function, and this function basically returns us an 
integer which is the position of the element if the element exists in that array and minus one if it doesn't. Pretty simple as that so now as we discussed in the in the sketching part of this. Now first of all we are taking the p and q assigning them one to the zero and the other one to the end of the array and the process is going to continue until we narrow the difference between p and q to actually be one which means q would be p plus one or it will be p exactly so okay while the while this range is still bigger than one what do we do first of all we take the middle element of the range and do the comparisons is is the middle element equal to our element yes then we found it and no then let's go for the cases is, is it smaller if it is smaller then we are making the p equals to the middle. P is the left side of the range. So now we are going to, on the second iteration, check the range middle up to the size minus one. Well, otherwise, if it is bigger, then we are assigning Q to the middle. And basically now we are going to perform the operation from zero to the middle, which is as we had in this lovely drawing right here. Okay. And we keep doing this while their distance is greater than one. And of course, when the loop exits, there are either two cases. Uh, the pth element is the element, or the qth element is the element. And if none of them is true, then simply the answer is minus one. Okay, this is pretty much it. Um, now, for the sake of the demonstration, how fast this is actually gonna be we can go for the main code. Okay, the main code. We're making an array with uh, one million elements. This multiply it doesn't matter. It's just gonna multiply everything by 100, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so in this one million elements, we're going to do 1000 queries and see whether that element exists or not. Well, the answer is arbitrary. Well, because the algorithm works, you can run the tests and stuff. Anyway, so the std find is the linear search. It just goes through every element and says, well, it's there or it's not there. And quite conversely, we have the same thing, but with the binary search. And these things will actually make the time estimate. So we can go, uh, I'll actually fix this right here. Okay. So the very same number of queries, the very same array, the very same numbers. So now let's estimate the differences. So let's go make. Okay, I've done that once before, but it should take about six seconds, something like that. And by the way, this is in debug mode. Anyway, so as we can see, the linear one took um, 6.5 seconds. 1000 queries on 1 million element, which is kind of 1000 multiplied by 1 million multiplied by something and 1000 queries with the binary search. It took 0, 0, 0, so 10, 10 to the power of minus 4, which is pretty decent, exponentially less. Well, uh -huh. okay, this is pretty much it, and I would say we are done.